With so much older telecommunications running via satellites, many people would think that data traveling thousands of miles could just be beamed to a satellite and over to the next country. As it turns out, satellites can't handle that much flow of information. It is very expensive, and the loss of signal and data during transfer is a problem. Sending terabytes of data via space satellite could cost billions of dollars per lot. You may be surprised to know that 99% of international data is transmitted by cables at the bottom of the ocean, called submarine communications cables. The miles and miles of cables, which are roughly the size of a garden hose, carry internet traffic at the speed of light. They can carry so much traffic that fewer than 300 cable systems transport almost all internet traffic around the world. Laying and installing of cables in the oceans of our world is a fascinating business. Men and women toil long and tedious hours to make this possible. But how is this process accomplished? How are sea cables installed in the sea? Installing a submarine transmission cable is a costly and challenging activity. The lifetime of a submarine cable might be 25 of years, and the technical interventions for its repairing in case of faults are also costly and difficult. In the manufacturing process, the cables move through high-speed mills the size of jet engines, wrapping the wire in a copper casing that carries electricity across the line to keep the data moving. Depending on where the cable will be located, plastic, steel and tar are added later to help it withstand unpredictable ocean environments. When finished, the cables will end up the size of a thick garden hose. A conveyor that staff members call the cable highway carries cables directly to the port. Laying down the transmission cable on the seafloor is done by specialized vessels. They are all equipped with a turntable for at least 4,000 tons of cable and have the appropriate gear to handle it. Inside the ship, workers spool the cable into cavernous tanks. One person walks the cable swiftly in a circle, as if laying out a massive garden hose, while others lie down to hold it in place to ensure it doesn't snag or not. Even with teams working around the clock, it takes about four weeks before the ship is loaded up with enough cable to hit the open sea. The complexity of laying down the cable requires a coordinated work of many specialists in different fields. Path selection is the first step, and it is done by power system engineers together with marine specialists. The survey is performed by geologists, geophysicists, and oceanographers. Once the path decided and cable is on board, starting from shore, the cable is laid out to the edge of the water. The cable laying ship gets as close to shore as possible without grounding and starts digging. Ships pull a type of plow that digs a trench and lays the cable at the same time. Sometimes, cables have to be picked up if run over another cable, or if the cable can't be buried. There is a lot of planning that goes into the route the ship will take. Undersea mountains, valleys, coral reefs, rocks, and fault lines are all taken into consideration. Preferably, the cables will also be located in areas that minimize the risk of damage from boat anchors and fishing trawlers. The special amplifiers, spaced about 25 miles apart, Within these undersea cables are used usually to boost up the voltage of the signals carried in them in order to prevent the losses in the cable. However, the cable ships must take necessary measures while laying out the fiber optic cables in the seabed to ensure that they do not break and the amplifiers do not get damaged and can work for many years uninterruptedly. The typical lifespan of cables is thought to be about 25 years, but they don't really ever expire. Usually before the 25 years is up, new technology means the cables have become obsolete 
and new cables are run for more data capacity. When that happens, they can be repositioned and laid along a new path, which is good for areas that don't need as much capacity and want to save on costs, since running these types of cables usually costs hundreds of millions of dollars. Some companies gain rights to pull the cables up and salvage them for the raw materials. So now you know how are undersea cables laid in the ocean. Still, if you have any questions, please write us in the comment section. May technology bless you.